chapter 12 is about conducting sample surveys and different types of bias. There are six different types of bias we're going to look at and four different ways to uh, conduct a sample correctly. Um, this is mainly a vocabulary type of chapter. It's not really any math computation. It's just learning the vocabulary, learning to recognize it in a situation. So the first vocabulary terms we're looking at is census versus sample survey. A census examines the entire population and a sample survey only samples part of the population. And they are used to um, represent all of the population. First two types of bias. We have under coverage. This is when you fail to sample some part of your population or you're sampling in a way in which part of the population is given less representation than they should have in your sample. For example, if you're surveying everyone based on names that you drew from a phone book, then this would be under coverage of anyone whose um, phone number is not listed in the phone book. Non-response is a type of bias in which a large portion of our individuals that were selected to participate in the sample do not participate and their opinions are not heard. This happens a lot with phone surveys when people call up and say, hey, can you take 10 minutes to answer the survey? A large portion of the population just hangs up on those people and their opinions are never heard and uh, therefore the results of that survey are not really very accurate. Finding a uh, type of bias in this situation, a business school student wanted to study how people felt about filling out surveys, so to do this he designed a questionnaire and gave it to a sample of students at his school. He was surprised and happy to learn that nearly all the questionnaires he got back indicated a positive attitude towards answering surveys. From this he concluded that people in general must not mind filling out questionnaires. Um, you have under coverage here because he's only sampling the people at his school, not representing the population as a whole and you have um, non-response because the people that don't want to fill out the survey don't like filling out surveys, they're just going to ball it up and throw it in the trash. That's probably a large percentage of your sample that you're gathering and therefore those opinions are never heard. More types of bias. Convenient sampling is a way to sample, but it's a bad, biased way to sample. This is when you sample a group in a way that's easy for you to conduct the sample. However, it's not really representing the population in a very uh, effective way. Setting up a booth in the cafeteria, surveying students about their opinions of cafeteria food. This is an example of a convenient sample. It's a convenient way for the researchers to gather their data. However, not everybody eats in the cafeteria. People that uh, don't like the food probably wouldn't be there in the first place and um, you have a, a potential for people to not even bother to stop by the booth and have their opinions not even heard. Voluntary response bias is a type of bias in which people with strong opinions are the only one that participate in the sample. This happens a lot on radio talk shows where you can call in to the topic of the day and give your opinion. Only people with strong opinions are going to be the ones that call in. The majority of the population isn't even going to take the time to pick up the phone and call into that show so their opinions are never represented in the survey. What went wrong in this situation? Domino's offers a free pizza coupon to anyone who completes an internet pop-up survey. Um, it's set up to pop up on your computer screen when you visit many of the popular websites. You have under coverage here by those that don't have internet access or don't uh, visit those popular websites. You have non-response by the people that just X out that box and never fill out the survey, which is probably a large percentage of the population. You have voluntary response bias because only the people with strong opinions are going to bother to take the time to fill out the survey. Um, you have convenient sampling. Um, uh, this is a convenient way for Domino's to conduct their survey, but it's not really adequately representing the population very well. Response bias is when the Survey is conducted in a way that the respondents have a potential to lie about their behaviors or their attitudes. For example, if we were in the mall and we were surveying married couples about their faithfulness in their marriage and they had to answer in front of their spouse, they're probably going to lie about whether they cheated or not in their marriage. And that would be a response bias. Um, Nielsen TV journals, if you've never heard of them, they send you a journal in the mail and ask you to fill it out for a week with what you watch on TV at a certain, you know, at any given day on a certain channel at a certain time, what you watch, and then um, mail it back to them. And they send you $30 in the mail if you participate in the survey. Well, um, these are not very effective because there is a high potential for people to just try to mess with the data and, and flat out lie, or they're embarrassed about what they watch, and um, therefore they, uh, you know, again, lie about what they're really watching um, when they fill out the survey 
and send it back in. So there's a high potential for a response bias. A leading question is another kind of bias. This is when you word the question in your survey in such a way that the respondent feels persuaded towards a point of view. Um, in this example, it says, given the threat of nuclear war is higher now than ever in human history and the fact that nuclear war poses a threat to the very existence of the human race, would you favor a nuclear test ban? And they're leading them towards a certain point of view, so that's a type of bias. Here are the four sampling methods that are good ways to conduct a sample. The simple random sample means that everyone in your population is given a random number and then you generate so many numbers to be part of your survey. Um, we see this a lot in uh, jury duty. Um, social security numbers are used to generate who's going to be picked for jury duty. That's a simple random sample. Stratified random sample, you're dividing your population into non-overlapping groups and then you're selecting a portion from each group. For example, if you divided your class into boys and girls and then selected half of the boys and half of the girls to participate in the sample, then that would be a stratified random sample because you're first grouping them and then picking a portion of each group. Systematic sample means you are conducting your sample in a systematic way. Um, every third person that comes out of the movie theater, you stop and say, hey, what do you think of the movie? That's a systematic sample. Cluster sampling, we're placing the population into mixed groups and then picking a certain group to use them to represent all of our population. For example, the school that you're in is divided into classes that have freshmen, juniors, seniors, sophomores in all classes and you're choosing three classrooms at random and you're um, surveying all the students. You have multiple grade levels in that room, you have multiple races in that room, multiple genders in that room, so they're mixed groups they're representing the population at whole. It is possible to have more than one sampling method in a survey. If we divide the country first by geographic region, take a random sample of certain neighborhoods within each region, survey every tenth house in that neighborhood, we have stratified uh, sampling going on, we have cluster sampling going on, and we have systematic sampling going on. So there's multiple sampling methods used in that type of situation.